Hi everyone, my name is Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, upcycling, and sewing. So if that sounds like something that you're into, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made these shibori pieces with black tea. So black tea is a great thing to use for dyeing. It's really easy. You need very few ingredients and um, it's easy to find. I did these pieces with shibori folding and I will show you the folding techniques in this video. If you're interested in learning more about natural dyeing, you can check out my other videos and I'll put the playlist down below for my natural dyeing videos. If you want to get even deeper into natural dyeing, I would really recommend getting this book, Wild Color by Jenny Dean. It's a really well written comprehensive book about natural dyeing. It has lots of different types of natural dyes, it talks all about mordants, the history, and general chemistry of natural dyeing. I will put the link in the description below if you want to check it out. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go over the supply list. Most of these supplies are very easy to find. You're going to need some 100% cotton fabric or you can use linen or some kind of cellulose fiber, an iron, an ironing board or an ironing mat to iron your fabric, rubber bands to tie up your fabric, a large pot, and I always use a pot that I do not use for food when I'm dying, a hot plate or you can do it on your stove if you want, a spoon to stir up your dye, 20 black tea bags, you can use store brand or something like Lipton, cup of salt, Synthropol, also known as dyer's detergent, and a drying rack. I will link all of the supplies I use down in the description below. So to get started, I added about a gallon of water and 20 tea bags to the pot, and I just put it on my hot plate and turned it on medium to start to boil and steep. I just want to get those tea bags totally steeped in the water. I'm just making like really strong tea basically. And black tea has natural tannins in it. So tannins help the dye or the color stick to fibers. And um, a lot of times with dyeing you have to use a mordant. But with things that have really a lot of tannins, you can get away without using a mordant. So we're not gonna use a mordant today, and I'm just using tea bags. And I get a pretty nice color for not using a mordant. So I let this steep and kind of simmer for about an hour, and you can see it's a pretty nice dark tea color. So next I'm just going to turn off the heat and let it hang out for a few more hours to continue to steep with those tea bags. After a few hours of cooling, I really like the color, so I'm going to take the tea bags out. Before adding the fabric, be sure to pre-wash or scour your fabric to make sure that it's clean and ready to receive the dye. And I'm also gonna do some shibori folds next. So I'm using 100% cotton, and this is an old pillowcase that I'm cutting up to get four different patterns. If you use this recipe with the salt, you can use any kind of cellulose natural fiber, such as linen or rayon. Um, if you want to use silk or wool, you're going to have to use acid or vinegar instead. It's a little different. In addition to YouTube, I teach multiple in-depth classes on Skillshare. You can try Skillshare Premium for 14 days free with the links down in the description below. So I'm starting with a right triangle fold and I'm going to accordion fold this square piece of fabric into a long skinny rectangle like so and I'm just pressing it between all the folds to make sure it's nice and crispy. And then I'm going to accordion fold the right triangle so it's kind of like folding a flag, but um, instead of inside of itself, you're folding it accordion style or fan style. I'm using a wool ironing mat that is actually for quilting that I really love for doing shibori because you can 
um, use wider pieces of fabric than if you're using an ironing board, but you can also use an ironing board. If you're looking for shibori folding tutorials, I have a lot on my channel for different folds. So I encourage you to check out um, my indigo dyeing playlist for more ideas and inspiration. With this piece, I'm going to do a simple stripe fold. So I'm going to accordion fold it into a long skinny rectangle again. And then I'm going to start putting some rubber bands to make the stripes. So each rubber band is going to be its own stripe. And I want to make sure I get those rubber bands as tight as possible. For this one, I'm just going to do three rubber bands. So it'll be three stripes, but you can do as many as you want. If you want to do a lot of stripes, just add more rubber bands. So in the next fold, I'm going to do some sort of like geo patterns or concentric circles. And I'm just going to pull it up like you would do if you're doing like a ghost craft. And I'm going to wrap the rubber bands around the fabric. So each rubber band is going to be a separate circle. You can see my rubber band just broke. These are rubber bands that I bought for my hair and I really hate them. So I'm using them up for shibori and tie dye and I would not recommend them. But I prefer to use just like a rubber band like for, um, you know, tying up the newspaper. So if you have those, I would definitely recommend just using them. Just making sure to fill up my iron with more water. Uh, you know, you're gonna need a lot of steam when you're doing shibori folding. And um, my iron goes through a lot of water because it produces really a lot of steam. It's a Rowenta iron and I love it so much. I've worked with so many different irons um, with my sewing projects and um, going to design school. And this iron is awesome. So I'd highly recommend this iron. I'm going to accordion fold this piece into a long skinny rectangle again. And then I'm going to accordion fold it into a square. And I'm just giving it a lot of steam in between. If it gets really thick like this, you definitely need a lot of steam. So, so once it's in a square, I'm going to add some rubber bands to it. I'm going to make the rubber bands in a crisscross shape across the center of the square. So there it is, it's all set and all of my pieces are tied up and ready to go into the tea bath. So now I'm going to add my fabric and I wanna make sure that it's totally submerged. So I had to add a little bit more water and I'm turning the hot plate on about medium, medium low, and I'm going to let it start to heat up. So now it's started to get really hot. You can see there's quite a lot of steam and I'm going to add the salt. I'm gonna add about a cup of salt and I wanna make sure it gets totally dissolved. And the salt is going to help the tea get into the fabric. So both the fabric and the dye are negatively charged and the salt is going to help them stick together. So after I add the salt, I'm just going to keep this on a low heat for a few hours and just periodically check on it to see how the color is doing. So I let it simmer for a few hours and then I took it off the heat and let it just sit overnight in the liquid. And you can see the color is pretty saturated and I'm gonna drain it now and I'm gonna rinse these with cold before I open them. Okay, so I've rinsed them with cold just to kind of get most of the excess tea out. And now I'm going to open them up to see how they turned out. So 
Very cool. All right, well, I like that. Obviously it has to dry. It's gonna be very subtle, but I think that's pretty. It's a really nice pattern. Okay, so set that aside. I can't handle the gloves. I didn't really use any harsh chemicals in these things, so it's fine. Ah, wow. Look at that, that's so funny. It's like little geodes. Very nice. Okay, so there's the other side. Very pretty. Okay, let's do the next one here. Oh, beautiful. I like that. Wow, really nice. I love this double line. I wasn't sure how it's was gonna turn out. So on this end here, it looks like a double line. And then down here, it kind of just looks like a big single line. So interesting how it turns out. Last but not least, we have the stripe. Oh, wow. That's a really nice, bold stripe. Very nice. So now I'm going to rinse these again and wash them with Centripol, which is a dyer's detergent. It's pretty gentle. And here they all are sort of together here. I'm just gonna take them to my sink and continue to rinse them. So I rinsed these with cold and then I washed them on hot with Synthropol. That's also known as Dyer's detergent and I'll put the link in the description down below if you wanna know where to get it. This was such a small load that I just washed it by hand, but you could also wash it in your machine and then machine dry it as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have ever done any natural dyeing and what kind of natural dyeing you've done. You can also check out my other natural dyeing videos for inspiration. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can follow me on social media at Onyx Art Studios for more inspiration. And you can sign up for my newsletter at onyxartstudio.com. I teach live online workshops and I also have multiple workshops on Skillshare. So you can check out the links below for the dates and my free 14 day trial period with Skillshare. Hope you guys have fun dying and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.